Uh, this is part three of the FCR restoration. The time I have available today, I want to work on the new seat. Now, it, it may be, um, it may not be obvious why I uh, ordered a new seat. This one's in pretty nice shape. I could stri strip the paint off and repaint it, of course, but it's not that easy. Let me explain. The one issue is when I got this bike originally, this whole piece was missing. I created this from a, a piece of scrap fiberglass. I guess if you go back to the old restoration of this bike video, it's, and it's somewhere on the channel, you'd see what I did. And then I block sanded this all in and it needed body filler and everything to get it real nice. Well, over the years, and it's five years old, it's, it's kind of gone back to being a little wavy and ripply, which anything you do with Bondo never seems to stand the test of time. That's one thing. Now the other thing, because I have a dedicated camera mount in the seat, and I, this is something I use every time I ride the bike. What happens here is this whole piece is made from two, two shells, like two half shells. It's joined down the middle. I'll show the original, the, the uh, new one, the seam. And that seam, as time goes by and it sits in the sun, if you run your hand over this, you can feel it's not perfectly level. Well, the reason is because this whole piece in here this is very thin body work and it's fine for a track bike but because I use the camera mount I'm going to reinforce this whole piece inside with some fiberglass or carbon fiber whatever and to make that this camera mount is a little less it's it's just a little uh, flexible now I want it to be more rigid number one and I just want to get rid of that I'm going to try to see if I can get the yeah I can do it right now let me see if I can do it with this piece if I run the light bar down there, look, see that? Right there is the seam. Now, most people, most people would never even see that. I see it. That's the problem. So we're going to get rid of that, that little ripply stuff. We're going to have a perfect back. And it'll be a lot solider of a camera mount when I'm done. And that, there's also a bolt hole right here that we don't use. I'm going to fill that in. That'll get blended in. And then I need to reinforce where the bolts go on the seat in the bottom. So it may be an all-day project to get this seat all reinforced and ready for sanding. But the end result will be that I have a more solid camera mount, a nicer back piece, and my bolts will be reinforced, which all should contribute to just a better quality job. Now let me get down to shop. Now I just thought I'd mention this. There's a lot of people, even friends of mine, who look at the bike. And they look back here and they think, oh, that's a factory port. Well, you know what? It's not a factory port. And if you think it was easy to make this, I'm going to share a little secret that I, I normally don't take this off when guys are around oogling a bike. This is made out of wood. I've done this a million times when I'm out and I'm showing people this piece and they think, oh, there's a factory piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what it is, it's a material that they make ocean racing boats out of that's balsa wood laminated between two layers of fiberglass and I think you can see it right there but to make this piece what it is that piece is carved out of a piece of wood now it the average person is not going to do that I did that just because it was uh, well it was a challenge but and it's fun to take it off and I made two of them I have two of these pieces I have two so <laughs> Maybe I'm doubly crazy. I don't know. I just thought that would be an entertaining thing before we get down to shop. A lot of people don't know that. And sometimes it's these little details like this that just take an incredible amount of time. But I want to start right with the base part of the seat, the fiberglass part, and get... It's like building a house. I want the foundation to be solid. And that's what I'm going to try to work on today. This will be part three of the restoration. And I just wanted to mention something else. Sometimes, in the course of a restoration or a rebuild, it's the smallest little detail. And you look at it and you think, ah, nobody will ever notice that. Nobody will see that. Or something that you don't think is critical. And yet, you spend the time and energy doing it. And years later, somebody looks at it and go, wow, that isn't tape on the wheels. That's paint. Yeah. <laughs> little details like that. People notice them all the time. And it does make for a lot of fun when you go to one of the bike meetups. But I'm ready to get down to the shop. And we're still in a part of the year where we, uh, on nicer days, we try to get a ride in. And on the crappy days, days that it's raining or not appropriate, we try to pick a project to work on to upgrade our bike collection. 
And so back in the shop, this piece, and again, this is right from AirTech. It's really track day body work. So it is very thin, but this piece, you'll always be able to feel the seam no matter what. That's And what I'm going to do to the final part is block sand this till I get this perfectly, perfectly flat. And again, I need to fill in this little where there would be a bolt on a, a stock bike and do some reinforcing inside. So let's get started. So step one today is going to be the easiest of the three things to do is going to be where we know the bolts before we even drill and line up the bolts. I want to reinforce this whole thing on the inside using CA and carbon fiber. Is what, what typically happens if you over tighten this bolt, and there's usually a rubber washer on when I put it together, or, and you compress that rubber washer, you can get a crack in this. And of course, it kind of ruins your whole day. So let me get out some material to do that, show how to do that little reinforcement. We've done it a lot of times before. And before you do any body work, before you even put a piece of sandpaper on this, it's good to get that done. And by the way, just so you can see how this part is made. See, you can see the seam up here. We'll get rid of that now. There's a seam and inside there's a seam that goes the whole length of the part. It looks like, well, it looks like they did a very nice job of seam in it. And it may be that they've even done this. I think maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've done it with three pieces. I see there's a seam in the back. But anyway, it, it really doesn't matter because we're going to reinforce it anyway. And this is always the material we use for this kind of reinforcement. Brodac, this is going to be thick and thin CA, available from Brodac.com. And I know where the bolt is going to go on this, so I'm just going to put on a nice, decent amount of this CA. I'm going to put a piece of carbon fiber reinforcement in there. I can actually put two layers on this. It's it's not going to be any problem at all. We're not losing any alignment or anything by doing this. Very carefully pull it apart with Q-tip. I may push it down. It's going to take a minute or so to kick off. That won't matter. We'll just let it kick normally. Whatever sticks over the edge, we'll be able to just sand right off. That'll really be a big step toward reinforcing that part. I'll let that kick off and we'll just run some sandpaper over that and then trim off the extra and radius that off. Now the reason for sanding it is not to make it pretty because these little hairs, once they have CA on them, become little pins and razor blades. So I don't want that to be that it winds up under my fingernail. But even little steps like this, they contribute to the longevity of the bike and we hope and once we've, we're going to spend a lot of hours on this paintwork and doing the body work and paint work and fits and finish. I don't want it to be that and I have a crack running up the side of the seat. Now what's handy with this is to have anything round. This is just a thing of buyer freeze, but it doesn't matter what it is. Put the sandpaper in there and what it's going to allow me to do is get a nice edge on this. And this side, you can bet, you can bet, uh, you can bet your big social security, well, for me, social security, check. <laughs> you can bet whatever you want to bet. This is going to be a lot stronger than if it were not reinforced. And I would suggest, and from the experience I've had doing a lot of Vlad's bikes, every one of the bikes that he brings here, as soon as there's a problem, it's this, we reinforce everywhere there's a bolt hole. So that the quality of the job, all the work you put into the finish or the refinish, a year later it doesn't fall apart. Because these bikes, they really do take, there's a lot of vibration, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. Anyway, and bef all of this has to be done. I always talk about sequencing. This has to be, in my book, you don't want to do this after you paint the part. You want to do this now and leave the, leave the painting part of it. For when this is all reinforced, all the bolt holes are done, then we'll be ready to start the finish. Now 
Now all I have to do is flip it over, do the other side, and boy, that's, that is really cheap insurance. And so much easier to do before you paint the part. Alright, both of the bolt locations are reinforced now. And boy, I remember specifically uh, Vlad Spinelli and the Bermuda both, how we had a lot of reinforcing to do. And after those parts are painted, boy, that reinforcing gets to be a pain. Step on this is so you can see this seam here. Now, even though you don't see it, I'll see it. And part of my, uh, I have to see where the, the seat is going to end here. That's going to be a problem. But this little part in here, even though it's underneath the tail of the bike, I don't want to have that seam showing. And you can see down here where the seam is. We're going to reinforce that. And it's it seems like overkill until the first day, well, in our case, because of the camera mount too, I want that as solid as possible. Now for the next step, what I'm gonna do, mix up some, and I'm gonna mix it right down in the part. Some quick five minute epoxy and some carbon fiber. Get that reinforced down there. And I can use up any carbon fiber scraps I have because this area, I'm just, you're never gonna see it. And I just wanna reinforce it. And this'll be a little bit more efficient the, uh, the CA, if I put that much area with CA, it's going to really stink up the whole shop. This has no odor at all. So we always, we always try to minimize the odor, of course, in the house because of Miles. And uh, he's actually coming over here today. I'm trying to get through this part of the project so this can be dry. And see, I have a couple of hairs here. I'm just going to get rid of them. By the way, that's a good way to get rid of them. Now, normally when I'm doing a, pe a part this big with a five minute resin. Yeah, like, it's not real critical getting A and B right down to the dot. But the more the more exotic resins like Epon and Huntsman, they are critical. So if you're new to this, there's a big advantage to, uh, to using Brodec or five minute generic epoxies that anything that's one to one is gonna be very easy to use and non-critical to the mix. The other resins require being weighed and being every other possibility of things that can go wrong. This is just a piece of scrap, not fancy. Nothing here has to be fancy. We can use up some scraps. And this is what we really want to do here, is just get this piece in. This will be fine. And when we once it's sanded down, I actually put a second little piece in the middle, hoping that I can get this as rigid as possible, basically for the, uh, the, the benefit of the camera mount, more than anything else, and to get that seam nice and flat. I gotta do inside the back. Again, I'll get it all done. All this reinforcement. It's so easy to do now and so difficult to do later. And the heat, of course, just helps the epoxy cure quickly. Now, while it's drying, I'll get a piece of carbon fiber down in here, even though I don't know how much of that we're going to cut away, as long as we're working with this material today. Get, if I can get all the reinforcement done today, then the next day I can go fit the bolt holes up. So we have all the carbon fiber reinforcements that we're going to need for this part. And keep in mind, if this were a track bike, you probably wouldn't even do this. You just let the part, uh, or whatever, let, you're not going to spend the kind of time painting if you're going to use the bike for a track bike. But anyway, here's the good news. This should be a beautiful, beautiful paint job on this at some point in time. And what we hopefully have here is we've got it. Now, last little thing, I got to put some Bondo or something in there. And then this will be ready for, actually, it's going to be ready sometime uh, the next time we get a chance to do a session. That's, that's hopefully going to be ready for the fitting of the bolts. And I know we have to trim the back by the taillight a little bit, maybe. And the final fit, and that'll be ready for paint. We're one day away from starting to paint on that. 
Now, I don't make any bones about it. I'm not a big fan of Bondo. I have seen so many times when uh, even cars, when there's been big cracks and things. So I always think if I can minimize the Bondo, this is just gonna be a little piece here, but I wanna roughen it up with some 180 paper because then when I go to do the final sanding, of course, I'll get some of this off. This gel coat, and keep in mind, gel coat has zero strength. So you, you've got to build the strength up in something other than the gel coat. And I hope now that we've got this, this is really nice and solid. That should make for much better the video footage out the back of the motorcycle too. And again, I do hate Bondo, but it's in this case, it's gonna be a, a necessary evil. But what I will do is after I sand the Bondo in, I'll put some thin CA on top of it to kind of seal it, harden it up maybe a little bit, I'm not sure. I was thinking maybe I should do this with JB Weld, and I said, no, no, let's, I don't wanna to get too cute. Every once in a while, I, I do get too cute. <laughs> Anyway, let's just see if this is going to work. Once it dries, of course, we'll sand it in. And because my grandson's coming over now, I don't know what time he's going to be here, but this is the problem all the time is I don't want to be, I don't want to sand or make anything excessively smelly when he's here. Yeah, we'll just let that sit. Now I'm just trying to rough this in with a sanding block. Again, what I'm going to do, and I've, I've done this before, so it's not a new thing, and I've done it on video many times. Once this is almost the shape I want, I'm going to cover it with, with CA. But just to make it a little harder, but, but I really, believe me, believe me, I do not like Bondo. So this is what I try to do to harden this up and leave the last couple of thousandths of material that it's a hard material. The Bondo never gets really hard. Now I have to do that a few times, each time block sand it. Let it kick off normally, but eventually that'll blend right into the gel coat. And if you use a, hand, a hard sanding block in between sandings, this will eventually just blend right into the gel coat. Of course, the gel coat sands very, very easily. I want to blend that in. It may take two or three coats. It doesn't matter. And I don't do it by looking at it, I do it by feel. If I, can't, if I can feel that, it means i got to put another coat on. Well, that's all the work we're going to get done here in part three. We have our little Bondo areas filled in roughly. Of course, they'll be finalized. And all the reinforcements are in. Now, the last step, of course, and I always, I always emphasize sequencing. I have to fit this to the bike, get those holes drilled. And it'll be ready for a final sand out. And I hope that, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to work this top and the back and get it perfect that I don't have any of that little ripple effect that the original parts had. So I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned a little something or figured something out that you'd like to do if you're working on a restoration. And again, thanks for watching.